What's up everybody, it's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio12Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio12Tutorials, pick up your premium membership, it is 50 cents a day. We are teaching music theory, we are teaching how to make every kind of beat imaginable, we are teaching an infinite amount of music hacks, we are giving away free MIDI drums, we have the we have the Astro World MIDI drums transcribed directly from the album, we got Scorpion Side A transcribed directly from the audio album, I got Without Warning in there, I also have 20 free quarter presets designed by me not by a pop artist not by an r&b artist these are usable in um you know realistic hip-hop trap and r&b progressions from uh you know a producer that makes current music that you want to hear so uh, today's video is about uh piano parts and a you know a little a little piano roll hack that i could teach you guys um typically when you make a piano part it'll sound like this And you know that's that's cool. That's okay. You know, um, but really, what you want your piano parts to sound like is you want your piano parts to sound like those, you know, like the the Young Thug and um, <clears throat> Kodak Black type of piano parts. Something that sounds more like this. So there's a there's a method that I go by and it's and it's really it's it's really easy it's really simple it's, it's real direct. Now, if you guys want to know how to create uh, you know these these harmonies and these melodies, studio12tutorials.com. Go to the music theory tab. You can do this literally. You spend probably 60 to 80 minutes with those tutorials, and this will all be you know this will go from being Greek to English to you. Now. Um, so you go ahead and you program out your parts. I got my I, I got my upper harmony. I got my bass melody, um, and you'll see the first thing that you notice is everything is quantized uh, directly to the grid. And another thing that you're going to notice is you know when you click your notes in, every all the velocities are going to be the same. The first thing that you want to work on is is your velocities. Typically, for a sound like this. Um, the first thing I like to do is I like to make my bass notes a little bit lower than everything. So I'll highlight everything and I'll click and drag them, you know, I'll click and drag them down a little bit um, below. You see these blue notes in the background. It'll be, you know, it'll be <clears throat> below um, the majority of the blue notes or the majority of these other notes. Those blue lines represent these notes right here. Now, that'll that'll get you sounding a lot better. Then what I'll do is I'll take um, is I'll take like these these thirds. I'll make them one velocity and you can also see in studio one I don't know if uh, if the, if other dolls do this but studio one the velocity is represented at the end of at the end of these notes and basically what you want to do is you want to make it so that um, all the notes have a slightly different velocity from each other that's th that's really what you want to get to you see how this has kind of like this is kind of stacked you know you it, it, it almost looks like it almost looks like uh like you're playing the Spider-Man game and there's different skyscrapers in the in the distance. You want it you want it to look like that. Um just just having a different velocity on everything is going to make it sound like more of a realistic um played piano part and the reason for this is when um a person's uh, hands hit the keys because of the way that the muscles in our hands are wrapped and the way that the nerves work it's very 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 rare that um two fingers are going to hit the uh two different notes at the same exact pressure and speed um when you put your hands down on the keyboard so if you want to you know if you want to mimic a realistic piano part that this is going to be really important for you to go ahead and program like that now the other aspect of that is the timing um it's going to be very rare that uh somebody who's playing the piano is going to have uh their fingers hit um each note in a chord at the same exact time so to to mimic that and um in in vsts like um like scalar or something that would be called your strum function 
Um, you can mimic a studio one doesn't have an automatic strum function yet. It'd be cool if they had one. Um, but, uh, w to mimic it, all those, all those other dogs that have strum functions, all they're doing is they're, is they're going down to a low uh, resolution. So you can take, you could take a 164 and then just, and then just bump your notes over, you know, zoom in and bump them all over 164 at a time. My top note, I bumped it over 264 notes and that just gave me a more exaggerated strum. So you can, you can hear the difference. We'll listen from this chord to this next chord. Now this, this right here, this is, this is this is the secret 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 weapon and um this note this note right here is not part of the actual melody right but this is something this is something that i'll add at the end and it's just like it's just like a little pickup note um before you know before this next note and you want to if you're working in double time and this this works great in double time um it's going to sound a little bit different in straight time. So if you make your beats at like 60 BPM or 70 BPM, you might want to, to get this effect, uh, you might want to consider um, doubling that BPM and working with the grid like that. Now, all I do is I go to the smallest resolution, 64, and I'll just pick, you know, the note above or below this within the scale and just input it here. When you zoom out, it looks, you know, completely inconsequential, like it's not part <clears throat> of the... Um, of the melody at all but it gives it it gives it the effect of of a person um sliding their sliding their hand across the keyboard to get to a note which is a common playing tactic or a, a technique so again just more added realism to the program part Now, Studio One has a very cool feature um, called Humanize, and that's what I use for, I, that's what I'll use for my bottom notes. And what Humanize does is if we zoom in real quick and we take a look at the position of these notes now, you see some of them are, you know, some of them are uh, positioned a little bit uh back in the in the groove this one this one's pushed a little bit further forward this one even more so and what and what um hu the humanize function you can do you can right click on it go to musical functions and go to where you at humanize and before this used to this used to act in a in a random fashion um which which I didn't really like too much but now they've made it so that you can add, so that you can add parameters so you can set the threshold of how um of how it'll choose to randomize your velocity so I like to go you know in, in between you know e either 15% more velocity or 15% less velocity and then you can add the threshold of the note start range as well so it so it'll either go 0.8 back or 0.19 forward um i always choose to um have the option of the notes going you know later in the beat you know more to the right than than earlier um i like i, I like things to drag more than i like them to to push so that's the, the those are my settings and I'll, I'll always use this I'll use this for for the melody notes I won't I won't use that on the chords but in this particular piece it's um, the the melody is being played in the bass in the bass hand um, typically you'll have your melodies played up higher but you know any again anytime I use the anytime I use the um the humanize function it is for this and it just kind of it uh, again adds to the realism you're not gonna if you're playing piano you're not gonna play exactly to the grid and you can just again you can tell the difference in the sound so let's listen one more time so there you have it easy quick way you know it's it, it's not a whole lot of programming to so in review use the humanize function on on your midi hands um i mean on, on your melody hand go ahead and set you know play around with the threshold and the parameters get a groove and a and a bop that you like 
um, zoom into uh, to 164 resolution and just nudge your notes over, um, you know, almost like a walk up or a walk down so that you can get that strum effect really easily. And don't forget to add this little this little sneaky um, passing note into you know into your melodies and you will notice a huge difference uh your your, your piano parts will sound way more professional and way more real so this is cmp with craftmaster production studio one tutorials.com y'all keep it simple and do not be basic and we will see you on the next one